All right, let's go. We are recording. Here we are in the Woo-hoo. 8th of April. Tom Dumscombe is going to talk to us about the basics of Swift and beyond. Woohoo! So this, we've been waiting. So thank you, everyone, for your patience. We had a miscue on Monday, and we are here today to get started. So, Tom, I'm going to turn it over to you. And you can share an overview of what the, um, the event is about, and, and then I'll follow you around with the uh, pinning. So okay. keep track of what you're doing. All right. Um, all right, guys. Welcome to the talk. Uh, Michael COVID roped this into me because I know he sees my Zwift workouts every week. So uh, I'm not necessarily an expert at it, but I have been doing it for about five years. So I think I've picked up enough. So if there are some folks in there that are, are curious about it or have just started um, or are, you know thinking about it and have, maybe have a trainer, um, hopefully this um, can help out, give you a feel for what it's like. Um, let's see, I, the type of rider I am, I've been, you know, keep working out since forever, sports club teams and then working out and I've been active in the club for four or five years, uh, centuries, double centuries, randoneering, so I've gotten pretty deep into the cycling. Um, so I've been on Zwift for about four or five years. Uh, I've gotten a, almost 12,000 miles in about 650 hours. Um, and, um, so I'm not really an expert, but uh, we're going to go and give you the best information I can. Uh, the reason I Zwift is um, basically I'm kind of a competitive person, so I want to improve um, basically how many watts I can produce and how long I can hold those watts for on a ride, ride. And I was really looking to get a trainer to kind of give me those supplemental workout that I could really concentrate on that. Um, other than that, it's a great way to stay in shape. It's easy to get on the bike if you've got it all set up and, and do it anytime. Um, um, and when you've done a tough ride, actually, it's good to get on and kind of spin your legs out. It's actually uh, pretty, um, it helps out quite a bit. So my goal today is uh, to kind of tr- give you guys a feel for what Zwifting is like. I'm going to go over the equipment, hopefully quickly, um, what I think is the easiest equipment, the easiest setup there is um, without a whole lot of extraneous equipment. Um, and then quickly show you my profile, what are the key things are in it. Um, And then we're actually gonna get on the machine and go through a couple of rides. Uh, Hopefully I'm gonna just do a solo ride. I'll show you how to do a workout. I might do need to do a a group uh, ride. And then they've got a new pretty powerful function that they just are starting out called a pacer um, that are, they're they're basically, robots or uh, bots riding around this Zwift world at a very specific pace. And you can now enter in and ride with those bots and know that your pace is gonna be very, very uh, consistent. Um, Let's see, so those are the basics. And if we have time, we'll try to go into some of the more fun stuff, which is uh, our avatar and customizing the avatar bike selection and things like that. Um, Cause the longer, the more you Zwift, you actually earn points as you're on it. And when you earn points, um, you can add to your collection of bikes and wheels and things like that. Um, again, I'm not necessarily an expert. I, there's a great website that Zwift has called ZwiftInsider.com. Um, and they've got a lot of videos, we've got recommendations there. So I would uh, think that, you know, it would be a good idea for folks to keep that in mind um, when they uh, need more information about Zwift. Otherwise, I'll try to stay out of the, in, out of the weeds. Um, so Zwift is essentially a game application um, where you need a smart trainer to enter a world as an avatar and you can ride around eight different um, cities or worlds that they've created. Um, The terrain includes uh, deserts and alps and jungles, underwater tubes, um, sequoias that are in like the middle of a Jurassic Park. Um, And that's in volcanoes that you can ride through. And that's just the original world. That's Watopia. That's uh, the most extensive world that they continue to add on to. Um, And there's a lot of different routes. 
Um, one thing before we get started, I think that folks need to know about Zwift. There's one ratio that you need to understand. It's a fairly simple formula. You need to understand it because it categor categorizes you as a rider. And so you know kind of where you are in the Zwift world. Uh, and it categorizes the various races or, um, um, or group rides and things like that. Um, they, they, they categorize them. And that's, uh, you have to figure out what your watts per kilogram are. Um, essentially, how many watts you can produce uh, based on how many kilograms you weigh. So, um, let's see if I can, you guys can see this. Let's see, Michael, are you, can you guys see this? Uh, Michael, I'll, I'll just hear it. Tom? Huh? Maybe we I'll can just... pin Tom's laptop. Are we, pin, do we pin the laptop? There we go. Yeah, that's, that's pretty, there we go. Anyway, I'm going to just say, so I weigh 175 pounds and you've got to convert that into kilograms. So that is 80 kilograms, essentially. Um, there's one more term that you need to know, which is a, a functional threat, fresh threshold power, FTP, they call it. And that is um, what you can realistically hold in power for one hour. That's your maximum uh, that's, you, you know, the maximum amount of power you can hold in an hour. So if you want to know what your upper end of category, how fast you could ride in one hour, say if you were doing a race, you would divide your weight, uh, you would divide the threshold power. And mine is about 260 um, for an hour and I weigh 80 kilograms. So that's 3.2 watts per kilogram. Um, so that's what I'm at about a 3.2 pros are probably between a four, uh, and a six. Um, and, uh, and then they divide theirs into, into four groups, A, B, C, D's and E's. They have A's it's four to six kilograms per watt, uh, uh watts per kilogram. B's are 3.2 to 3. Nine uh, C's are 2.5 to 3.1. So I'm right in that C range. So I know at the lower end of the C's, I have a going to have a pretty comfortable ride. Uh, if they if the a ride says they're going to do three kilowatts, I know I'm going to be um, pushing the limit. If this ride is about an hour, it's going to be pretty uncomfortable. I'm going to be almost racing to stay up with them. Um, and then so I could enter a D if I want to relax and things like that. So that's a good uh, ratio to become familiar with if you're doing Zwift so you understand what kind of rider you are and what kind of ride you want to do. Um, all right. Okay. Um, do I want to show the Zwift account? Let's see. Okay, I'm going to go to my Zwift account that I'm I'm going to use my phone here and can I turn my phone around? Yes. Uh, all right. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's my Zwift account. Uh, shows essentially you need your name, which is I'm called T Duns on the way. So this is the screen name that's going to show up for me when I'm riding. Um, and then it just, I, you know, I have my birth date and stuff. The other thing is you need, it needs to know about you because it's going to create an avatar uh, and it know, you, you enter your height and weight. And that's probably a weight when I was in a little bit better shape, but uh, that's the weight I have in there, which is 174 pounds. Um, so that's the, those are the two variables. The two most important variables are the amount of watts you can produce and the weight that you have. And then it, it uses its algorithm to move you through the world at the speed and the grade that, um, that uh, they're creating. Um, let me see, try it out. So the Zwift account, it's, uh, it's about $15 a month. I use it eight to 10 times a month, sometimes more. So it's a good deal for me. You get about a week free, I believe, before you have to start paying. Um, so Zwift needs to know your name. They need to know your height uh, and weight. 
And uh, you can also link your account to social media. So after you do a ride, it'll say loaded back to Zwit, back to Strava or uh, to Facebook or any, any other application that you want. Um, let's see, let me go back to my Zoom meeting. Okay. Do I, can I, I stop for questions, Michael? Does anybody have questions? Can no, I, I anything? Usually, you know, I, what I usually do is um, ask people to put them in the chat and then I'll read it and, okay. um, and then interrupt when you have a pause. If that, well, so I'll, pause, I'll pause at this point, so I, because I'm going pretty fast. I have a right. It sounds like Phil, Phil has a question. Phil, go ahead. So um, do they ha do you have different terrain terrain? This is or is this maps of the real world or is this? So there, there are eight different worlds, and uh, and courses within those worlds. Um, and for example, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to get on the bike and show you Watopia a little bit, and I'll show you the different courses. They have mountain passes that are like Alps. They have deserts, they have rolling hills with sequoias um, and, and dinosaurs walking around. They have volcanoes that you literally ride through the middle of and then you can ride up to the top of them. Um, they have um, like a Swiss Alp chalet area. They have a jungle um, with waterfalls. So there are all kinds of terrain and you can even have a mountain biking terrain now. So yes. And then they have um, copies of real cities. They have London um, in some of the hills around London. They have France now, a countryside as well as uh, Paris. And um, so a, a wide array of areas. And, I, and, and um, each of us say, uh, I don't, there's New York and I don't really like to ride in New York that much because there's a lot of very short ups and downs. And I like to either be going up or down and not up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. So I usually don't ride in New York that much. Um, so did that answer your question, Phil? Yeah, more or less. I mean, I've looked at Ruby a little bit and it's real Alps and the uh, King Ridge and Mount Diablo and all kinds of things that we know. So Ruby is um, a real world depiction of where you're riding. Um, and they kind of place you an avatar on um, an HD film of the surround. Uh, Zwift is all virtual. It's all a fake world. Um, so there's no real scenery there. It's all, it's all virtual. It's like you're riding through a cartoon, somewhat. Uh, let's see, uh, and, and, I, and I'm gonna get to that, so I'll show you the screen. Um, and then, so I'm gonna quickly go through the, if that's, I guess if we're done with the questions, I will, for right now, I'll, I'll show you my equipment, my setup. Um, yeah, let me show you the setup. Uh, so I'm gonna use my handheld for that, Michael. Let's see, let me bear with me one second. I was on mute. Yeah, I just switched it over. Okay, I'm going to reposition these computers. I'm going to put this one up so you can see my trainer from a distance. Hopefully. Do you see anything there? Uh, no. Yes, uh, it's in front of the bookshelf. Can you see other it? Have a good view. Now we see it. You're seeing your ceiling. Okay. So I'm on your eye, I'm, I have your iPhone pinned. Good. That's what I wanted. I just wanted to. Um, so here's right. here's the setup in the basic equipment. Most important thing is you need a smart trainer. That's a Tax Neo. Um, and, and if you want recommendations on smart trainers, I recommend you, you go to DC Rainmaker. Um, he, he, in depth reviews all the trainers so if you want to get a trainer that's somewhere five six hundred dollars he'll give you the best ones if you want to go eight nine hundred dollars the best ones if you, you don't want to go up to the highest end ones um, which nowadays you can spend thousands of dollars on a full bike 
that has a built-in trainer, he'll, he'll go over those too. So, um, so you can see it's a direct drive. I'm, I'm hooked directly to the trainer with a rear cog. Um, you can see I have my computer screen and you need a table to set your stuff up on because you wanna be able to reach and control the program. I just use my work stand and I made a table. Uh, so if I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on that, but if you wanna know how to make a table and use it with your work stand, uh, I can uh, talk to somebody about that. You're gonna need a fan, uh, especially if you're gonna be working hard, you're definitely gonna need a fan because I'm, I'm a heavy sweater. Um, obviously you need, so there's a mat protecting the floor um, from the sweat. Uh, which I sweat a lot, and uh, table, bike. And you can see how much stuff I have on my bike. And the reason is I have protecting it is because I am a real heavy sweater and I, I think I put a lot of salt out. Um, and I actually uh, damaged uh, my last bike. Um, I just wanted to show you this. Um, I actually got in the bottom bracket and started spalling the spindle. Um, and I actually, uh, I actually rusted these pedals and I actually rusted, sweated through my shoes until the nuts and the bolts underneath controlling the things uh, seized, seized up. And I had to cut the, uh, I had to cut the clips off the shoes and get new nuts. Um, so protect your bike it's you know it's a big investment so make sure you you've got it well protected uh from your sweat um let me see so i think we're about ready to ride here and oh no uh so we need uh we need a computer that is going to render the zwift world and connect to our uh smart trainer so the smart trainer is going to be telling the Zwift world where the program resides, how many watts we're putting out, the computer that's depicting the Zwift world is gonna be telling the smart trainer, what am I going uphill or am I going downhill or what am I doing? Um, and so they're communicating with each other. Um, in the past, uh, you can use a number of things as your computer. You can use a laptop, you can use your phone, you can use an iPad. The easiest thing I found with a really good graphic trips that renders the world really well and all the riders in it is an Apple TV. And it's like $150, $160. It comes loaded, comes loaded with the Zwift app. So you know you're not gonna have any problems with it because it's very compatible with the, with, the, um, with the Apple TV. So if I turn it this way, Michael, Yep. Okay, it's turning. Okay. All right, so everybody can see that. So you guys can see my name there, T Duns. I'm ready to go. Um, we're going to go in and I'm going to show you how this thing pairs with my smart trainer. So this the Apple TV computer here is uh, Bluetooth compliant and it'll pick up the signals that not only my smart trainer is putting out, but also my, my heart rate monitor. And I'm gonna show you that on the next screen. And so we're gonna enter in to Zwift and you can see it, it's picked up my, my smart trainer. You can see it's putting out, it's a controllable smart. It's also got a built-in cadence meter on it. It's got a showing the power source and how many Watts I'm putting out. And then it's picking up my heart rate monitor, which is a, a ticker fit. Um, so from there, we'll go into the next menu. And this is where we can decide what kind of ride we wanna do. Um, I'm gonna show you quickly the screens here. So here are the worlds that are available right now. You can see Watopia up there. You can see New York. You can see how many people are in each world. There's 1,857 in Watopia, New York, 700. Richmond, Virginia is about 350. Um, it shows how what I'm connected to. 
these are the rides that are some rides that are available right now. I'm gonna, um, you can go and select those in advance with a uh, companion app where you can go and see all of the groups that are running rides and races throughout the day and then pick your ride. Um, so right now we're not gonna do that. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna enter into, I don't think Richmond's that exciting. So we'll go quickly into Watopia. I hate this Apple controller to tell you the truth. Um, I'm gonna go into the desert area, see if it will select. I'm going to do a route. So I can, I can, Phil, you were asking about routes. Here's the desert area. It's like a west, it's like riding through a western town. You can see how big the world are. This is going up into like an Alps and then back down into the island, which is like a beach area. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, this is another one of the Alps. There's actually an Alp, there's over to the left that you can't see right now is an Alp de Zwift. They actually took Alp de Wes and they um, duplicated it. Um, so you can actually ride all whatever 30 turns there are and go up, I don't know, three or 4,000 feet. But you can see all of the different courses now you can choose one of these courses and you can deviate from it while you're riding because every turn you come up to, it'll give you a chance to change your route. Okay, so let's go down and ride. So we're gonna, I'm gonna hopefully hit ride. So we're gonna enter into the Zwift world now. I'm gonna, I've actually joined a group, but I have a few more minutes. What, you know what time it is, Michael? It's 7.25 and I have to leave. Okay. Bye. All right, so this is where a lot of the free rides start out on Watopia. You can see from left to right on the screen, you can see how many watts I'm producing, my RPMs, my heart rate. You can see how fast I'm going up in the center now, how many miles I've ridden. You can see the amount of time that I have ridden. Then you can see an overview of the map here of where I'm riding and all the riders that, that are passing me or ahead of me. Can I just see Jason's name on there? What's that? Can I just see Jason's name? I don't know, you might have. Yeah, it's his flesh. And then you can see all of the riders and where they're from around me on this changing list. You can see they're from Canada, Italy, Great Britain. All these people are out riding. You can see the time that they're either in front of me or in behind me. So when you're racing or riding with a group, sometimes it's good to see names if you're, you know, kind of into that. So, um, so Tom, you mentioned um, being in a grouping by your um, level, by your sea level, I think. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show you a group ride. Right now, we're just free riding. Like I oh, just, okay. I'm, I've just gone outside. I'm riding in the local neighborhood. I'm not concerned with choosing a group or how much power I'm putting out. I'm just a free ride. I can get on and ride anywhere I want. Um, so the next part would be to go to an event. And I chose this US Marine Corps. There's not many events going on. I have a half hour to join it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna join it. Over here, it knows I selected this. Here's where I can choose to deviate my course here. And I can go a different direction. So we're gonna go to the left towards the ocean. They actually, this actually dips down real briefly. I'm gonna just go in because it's kind of interesting. They've got tubes 
under the water. So you actually ride under the water into like a giant aquarium. Um, I don't know if that's going to take too long. Oh, well, let's go to joining this event. So this event is a sea event um, put on by this US Marine Corps group and they do a couple rides. So there's a lot of clubs up here, here that have enough members that they can put their own rides on. And what they do is they put up descriptions of what those rides are they're holding. And they might have multiple leaders in, in different categories. So you can choose the category you wanna ride in. These guys are putting on a sea ride. So we're gonna go join them and get in a group ride. So we're heading for Innsbruck now, completely different world. So what you can see is they changed my outfit. So it's matching that of the group. The ride leader has this yellow beacon on. And so you wanna kind of bunch up around the ride leader uh, to try to, keep up with the group. This is a C group, so I'm gonna work pretty hard <laughs> to stay up. And they're on an uphill section right now. So I'm feeling all of the hills. It's kind of hard for me to keep up. They have a yellow beacon and an orange beacon behind the, behind the yellow group. But again, this is where you wanna select the group that you can keep up with, because you can get dropped, just like a real ride. Once you get dropped, it's a lot harder to catch up. You, you actually feel the draft when you're in the group. So once you get um, dropped, sometimes they'll send people back to help tow you up to the group, um, but you have to call, kind of call for help. So, that's kind of a group ride. Sorry, it was pretty brief. I was hoping I could get one so I could hold my phone and, <laughs> and not to have two hands on the wheel well, and drop in. That's good, that gives a good feel, right? Yeah, so this is Innsbruck, a completely different world. They have another kind of alp climb here that's very similar to, uh, well, I don't know what, if it's Alpe d'Huez or what it is but I think they've done a pretty good job of rendering these cities and creating a number of courses on each one. So let's go, let's go back out and I'm gonna show you how to do a workout. So what I'm gonna do is end this ride. And what it's gonna show is give me the stats of my ride. So, I was in a C ride, I did, I was only averaging 120 watts. I really needed 200 to keep up with those guys. Um, I only went three quarters of a mile. I did it for two minutes um, and Zwift uh, does it in pizza slices. So they tell you how many pizza slices you burn. And then you can see the people that you've ridden with and this all will all load back up to Strava. So if you wanna contact these people or make them friends and things, you can do that. Um, so there's a real social component of Zwift. Um, so I'll toss, you can either save it or toss that away. Let me see. Um, I'm going, so we did, we haven't done a workout yet. I'm going to show you how to do a workout. We get back to our pairing screen. Okay, so workout. Um, it's right here, training. Again, I can choose the world that I wanna be in. Let's say New York this time. I'll just do New York, whoop. Let's go, training. Very hard time, uh, unfortunately, with uh, using this Apple. So this is the workout I do a lot. It's, Zwift has, has all of these workout menus here. And if you wanna spend uh, 
here's an FTP test. So if you want to get your FTP, uh, your functional threshold, if you don't know what it is, you can go in here and do a, sh a fairly short test to figure out what your FTP is here. Um, and then if you've only, and then they've got uh, workouts for an hour, uh, for over 90 minutes. And then they've got all kinds of programs that you can follow here if you want to improve and follow like uh, every week or day you're going to get on and, and, uh, and ramp things up a bit. Um, let's see. Virtual worlds too. Pardon? So when you choose one of these workouts, for example, the um, high intensity recovery ride, is that with a virtual world in the background? Yeah, you're still riding in a virtual world, but what you will notice is you go from feeling the actual terrain in that world to erg mode. And it's only gonna give you these watts. You can see this type of workout. So sure. if I set my FTP at 262, you can see it's gonna send me, there's a warm up period there in the gray and the blue. And then the orange and the yellow, I'm going to go over my FTP for a few minutes, and then I'm going to get a rest period of just under it, over and under, and then there's a long rest period. And these are, there are all kinds of workouts like that um, that you can do. So let's say what I'm going to do is lower my FTP down a lot so I don't have to struggle to talk here. <laughs> but at this point, it's not, it, I'm, it's, I'm still moving through this world at the speed I would be because it still sees how much watts that I'm putting out, but the watts are set. They're not, it's not my choice anymore so much because I've selected a workout. Um, so it's, as it's saying, it's going into to, to erg mode. And so we're gonna go to New York. We're gonna do the everything bagel in New York. Um, and all I have to do is go down to ride. Okay, so it's loading New York, and I'm going to say no because I already rode with this group. Uh, no thanks. Um, so I'm in New York, kind of been uh, 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 riding around the park here. And you can see my workout is now labeled here, essentially telling me what, how I'm going to be going through. And I'm starting with a 10 minute warm up. So it'll warm me up, and then I'm going to do three intervals five minutes, 100 watts, and five minutes at 90 watts times three. And so you can see the whole workout in front of you and how you're progressing. Again, it's in erg mode, so it's gonna start changing the watts to match what I'm supposed to be doing. See, I'm going 14. Again, I'm still going the speed I'd be going, but it's based on the amount of watts I'm producing. You can see the, you can for you or? Pardon? Is it suggesting a cadence to do those walks? No, I'm, I can adjust the cadence. It's actually following my cadence. My, my smart trainer has a cadence meter on it. So you're actually seeing me spin virtually um, at the same rate I'm spinning on my bike right now. Okay, yeah, no, I have a Wahoo and I'm, I use Sufferfest, but you know, if there's a guided workout there, it su suggests you, you know, like at 65, um, or 85, or 90. Yeah, the, some of these will tell you that they want you to um, to spin at a certain cadence. Um, this one is not is not right now. And what are the th few things that you can do if, say, you're not feeling it over here? Let me see. I can I can take this workout. I can skip. I can skip ahead. You can see down here, I can pause the workout. Mm -hmm. I can turn, I, I guess I can turn or on or off. And if I feeling stronger, I can up the, I can up how, uh, how hard the workout is. Whoop. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I can increase that wattage if I'm feeling better than uh, um, this is kind of the perspective of how, what, how I'm, how I see the world or how, how I see myself on the screen. Mm -hmm. So let me see if I can select that. So this is changing the perspective of how you're seeing me. Why, uh, I guess it's changed my outfit there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I unfortunately jumped out of the workout.
it's given me the ride report again of my workout it shows me um, how many watts, how far I went, how long I worked out, it shows me what zones I was in um, and things like that. So you get a whole kind of, uh, you get a whole ride report when you're done. Um, I'd like to do the menus. Okay, so there's one other, how are we doing on time? You know, we have about uh, 20 minutes. Well, we have about maybe, let's say, 15-ish minutes. We can open up for questions. Okay. Um, let me go into one more, which I think is really cool. Hopefully, they've got... So, when in Watopia, like I said, they've released these riding bots. Right now, if you're going to do a group ride, you've got to select the group ride that you want to be in. And, and there, but there's still real people leading it. Um, and those people might not be the greatest leaders. They might actually be leading a ride faster than they've advertised it. And that can be very frustrating, especially if they're, they're going too fast. Um, they're in, Zwift is introducing this world where these bots are and they are set at a very exact um, watts per kilogram. So you, um, can and, and it looks like they're just riding around nonstop in the world. So I'm going to see if they're still out there. And I think they're in Watopia. So I hit Watopia up there. And within Watopia are four pace partners here. So if I want, uh, I can choose them and it's going to come up and it's going to say, shows where they're pacing. Road to Ruins, there's an A group, that's way too fast for me. A B group, which uh, would be very painful again for me to hang on there at the end. Uh, and then the desert here is a C group, moderate pace. And then in the flat, uh, there's a flat route, they got a, a, a one to one, uh, 1.2. So usually, so we'll see, I'm gonna choose that. And then we're gonna go out and do the, we're gonna ride with the D group, okay? Let's go, where am I? Now I'm gonna, that's why, yeah. I am not good with this Apple controller. So where are they? Here's the, okay, so there's a yellow robe, a bot up there ahead. So you can hold on, let me change my gears and catch up. So that yellow, I'm gonna get up to him. You can see him to my left. That's a yellow robot right there. And all these people are real people that are, looks like mostly from the United States. And they're just here riding at a very even pace. He's hey, excuse me. Okay. What's that? Uh, I was I was just interrupting you because your finger was over the camera, but now it's oh, it's it's, at, it's better now. Can you see? Yeah, I think your finger's still on it, but I I, I think we got the gist of it. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's so you good. Can see he's putting out about a consistent one point six watts per kilogram, which is a pretty reasonable pace. Um, if I just wanted to get on, hang with this group and not worry about chasing after some leader that might have decided that he really wants to ramp things up. Um, I think the leaders are getting a lot better when they first started. The leaders, it was kind of a wild card whether they were gonna follow their, their stated workout or not. I see. But I, I think this is a pretty powerful thing that they've just introduced. Yeah, he's, that yellow one, he's putting out 1.5 watts, or it is putting out 1.5 watts. So those are some of the basic workouts. I want to ask you, about I saw today's plan flash up. Do you, um, so do you, do you use workouts today's plan suggests, or are you just? No. Okay. <laughs> I just do, I, I usually do, um, about a 90 minute workout that I uh, am pretty consistent with. 
I haven't followed any plans or anything. Um, and then I join group rides and I can join group rides that are up to almost three hours long. Uh, yesterday I did a, uh, a metric century with a group um, and that was almost two, hundred, two hours and 45 minutes. Um, it was in a flat area and when you have 50 or 100 people, you're actually you're moving at like 23 miles an hour because you're with such a big group on a flat. Um, so you really can uh, cover a lot of ground in Zwift, um, which is pretty true. I mean, I don't ride with groups that big uh, I'd ever. Um, so I tend to um, get kind of faster miles per hour on Zwift than I do in the real world. Um, anyway, so those, <laughs> I think those are the basic rides that I wanted to show you. I hope you get a feel for the world. Um, one thing I did want to show, uh, I'm going to go, so if we had time, I'm going to turn this back around. <clears throat> I'm going to show you the, I'm going to show you the settings. And this is an important thing to know. If you have a, you know, so you're essentially riding um, this trainer difficulty. So you can change how your trainer reacts. One of the important thing is, you know, here are sounds, but this trainer difficulty is an important one. If your bike is not really geared for hills, you're still going to feel like the, when you get on 11% grade, you're going to feel that 11% grade on your bike. And if your bike isn't geared for it, or you're just not ready to be riding 11% hills, this is this, uh, is where you can essentially flatten out the hills so they don't feel as, um, as, as steep. Um, and you don't need to change your gearing here. Uh, you're not gonna move any faster. It's still gonna move you up that hill at the amount of watts you're putting out, but it actually gives you kind of a break so you'll be able to spin faster on like a lower sloped hill. Um, again, it doesn't, it, it, and so you can, and there are other things, but that trainer difficulty line is the one that you want to, uh, is, is the one that you want to vary based on whether you, you really, you want to feel the hills or, or not. Um, so that I thought that was probably the most important thing on this men memo. You can see some of these are specific to my tax because I have can actually feel the road if they go over a brick section or a wood section, I'll actually feel the vibration on my uh, tax and you can turn those things on and off. Um, what is the pain? Say again? The workout pain effect? I I'm not sure, I've never messed with it. Oh. I'm assuming that it can't turn the pain off, <laughs> but I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure how it does that. Yeah, a little, a little. How virtual is that? <laughs> but that's a cool one, I uh, guess. Okay, here's the fun stuff. Um, this is the garage where you can choose your various frames. And again, as you ride through Zwift, the more ride, uh, the more uh, miles you rack up, you actually earn points. So you can earn, and the and the more levels you achieve, you it opens up more things for you to be able to kind of purchase with the points you've got. So you can customize your bike. They even have glowing wheels and bikes and time trial bikes. We've got people that are heavy into racing um, and all kinds of stuff. And, uh, and then they've got, shoot. Okay, so I've got a few bikes, but to tell you the truth, I don't even, I, I don't bother changing them. I just, you know, I just use the bike I have, but you can see probably all these big bike makers have paid good money to, uh, to have their bikes show up on Zwift. Um, even mm -hmm. though you're only getting a virtual bike, you know, <laughs> but you could, you Great could nice select thing. your bike and change the color. And uh, let me see, let me go back to the garage. Sorry. Matching the advertising. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, I think there, let's see. So wheels, let's just, let's go to the avatar. <coughs> There's me. Uh, Got to be the old man with the gray beard. So you can choose your hairstyle. Uh, you can, uh, let's see, you can choose. There's a head type now. That was kind of only one head type before. Maybe there's a, that's, I guess that's the head type here. Um, so you can do facial hair. 
you know, so it, it, it lets you, um, you know, customize it a little bit. Then you can choose, you know, I've unlocked, you can see this is like the 25th level jersey I'm wearing. I thought that was close to our color. So I picked the yellow and green one. Um, but I've got a whole rack of jerseys that I've unlocked and I can wear things. There's lots of challenges to do. And if you do the challenges, you can get other jerseys and things like that. So there's always stuff going on that they're trying to challenge you to join. Um, and there's a whole uh, a social network aspect of it you know, where you can make friends and ride with groups and have meetups, um, you know. So you can, I thought it was cool. You can, you can choose your socks and you can even choose the color, but you can actually choose the length of the socks you want. So if you want your socks to go longer or shorter, you can, uh, cause that's very, very important in the world is to have the right, correct length of your socks or else uh, yeah. you don't want to be caught. Tom, with Tom, I had a question. This, um, it came in uh, from Ross uh, and, and he asked, uh, how do you communicate with other people during the ride? Okay, uh, because I'm using my phone. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm gonna pull. What happens is in, on the phone, um, uh, you can run a companion app. It's a Zwift app and I'm gonna pull my, this. So maybe you can switch back over. Yep, I just laptop. did. Yep, I just did. Laptop. Okay, so I'm going to open up my Zwift app and show it to you. Um, and the only reason I didn't do it, so here is that Z right here. I'm going to open that up. This shows me all of the events that are going on, and I can read the description of the events. And then when I get in and I actually start writing, this thing turns into another map and and it allows me to do use the touch screen there it is it thinks i'm writing now um so it's showing me the map that i am at and i can communicate people with these hand signals i can also write a text um so if i've got enough wherewithal i'm not too exhausted i can actually some people will have little trivia contests while we're writing and you can type in answers and so it's pretty fun sometimes. Uh, we had a two and a half, two hour and 40 minute ride and the woman that um, led it yesterday was doing trivia stuff and it was at like two watts. So it was, it was really fun. Um, and people were throwing in all kinds of uh, funny comments during it. Um, so the Zwift app, again, it comes on and I actually have it sitting right in front of me so when I want to communicate, I want to make a turn instead of using my Apple controller, which I have a really hard time doing, I use my phone. Um, and uh, so I'm kind of running the app in two different locations. Um, it's a really cool thing. And, it, and, and as soon as you open it, 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 you know, it recognizes that, uh, that you're on Zwift and opens the, the writer app up. Okay. Hey, I had a, a, a question um, while you were doing the um, writing with the bot, which is a really good idea, just a steady pace there. How do you avoid running into someone? Like, it, it seems like this bunch, and so you can accelerate or not. That's a linear you know, back and forth, but what about sideways and if someone gets in your way? So they they're experimenting with um, the steer kind of steering, but they don't have anything yet. They're experimenting with putting your phone on your handlebars um, and being in turn and again, getting something that you can turn your wheel on. Mm -hmm. um, but basically you ride right through people. Um, I think they've corrected that. So you're not riding through people, but you don't have to worry about bumping anybody or anybody run, you know, cause sometimes you come to a cross, you see people essentially ride right through each other um so it doesn't matter in the world you're not really physically there so bumping into people or riding through them is not you know uh, kind of an issue okay i've got i i don't even notice it anymore um even if they've corrected it because i've ridden so many miles i i have seen myself ride right through somebody in front of me you know okay does that mean you can't does that affect the, the drafting 
But once you get in front of somebody, you're going to be the lead person. So you. No, I understand that be behind if you ride through, kind of through someone. I guess yeah, then you lose the draft. Huh? It it does if you're out in the lead. If you're still in the pack, you won't feel any difference. It it, it doesn't have any effect of riding through somebody. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but if you lose that person, you will feel you'll go from a you know two and a half watts to three and a half watts, and and be very difficult to. Um, uh, you can you have a half hour so if you lose the group when the within the first half or you can exit out enter back in and then and then find it'll find the group and re-enter you back into the group uh, again uh, and like i said some of them actually they have uh people those the red beacons are usually the ones that go back and will pull stragglers back up um, if they get dropped off um you know okay. Great. Hey, are there folks in the phone or, or on the call? Are there other questions here? We have about five minutes left. Tom is cooling off. You know, he's got to hit the shower pretty soon. I we, we try to get him before he, he uh, takes off. We should ask Lisa what she uh, if she has anything to add. All right. Offer. Lisa's a, a Zwifter too. Okay, Lisa, we're I saw Mark Nienberg on here too. I know he's with, I think he's with me. Do you have anything right. to add, Lisa? Um, well, there is, the weight thing is a big deal on Swift. So being lower weight is a greater advantage on Swift than it is in real life. There seems to be a little bit of a, a closing. So the, it's a little bit helps people who are women who are smaller be a little bit faster on Swift than they are in real life. So Jason and I are more similar in speed on Zwift than we are in real life. I weigh 130 pounds of Zwift, by the way. So <laughs> <laughs> your secret safe, man. Your secret safe. No, that's a big bone of contention with a lot of racers because apparently um uh, you can go see everybody's stats that's in a race afterwards. Um, and so you can see their weight and their heart rate and things like that. And people can get called, can get flagged. Um, so I think it's a, it's a, it's a problem for people that are really into racing, uh, which I don't that much anymore, you know? Okay. And, uh, Mark Nienberg, you want to toss something in, uh, you're a Swifter. I'm still here. His name is up there. Come on, Mark. He's lurking. I guess he's being shy. Maybe he yeah. walked away. Yeah. He's in the middle of the race, I suppose. Yeah. So, so are there questions, folks? You know, I, I just want to say the questions I was asking you, because I, I you suffer fest a fair amount which has a lot of structured workouts. I was curious about checking out what the Zwift had to offer. Yeah, there's a huge menu of workouts that go on for um, weeks that you, if you've got a certain goal that you want to increase. Um, so there's, um, there, you know, you, that whole list, plus you can sign up for extra programs, I think, and get um, more coaching and things like that. Um, and then there's group rides again that go on. Um, they're called they're called e rides for everybody, and it's a structured workout. So you might be riding with somebody who's putting out five watts per kilogram, and you're putting out uh, one or two, but you'll all be riding in the same group, and it's adjusting your uh, workout according to what you entered as an FTP, but it's keeping the whole group together. Um, so there are uh, structured workouts that you can do with a big group that are live. Um, I don't know how they decide on a speed because if they keep everybody together, you're kind of rubber banding, you know, kind of through the group. Um, but there's quite a selection you saw on that workout menu to do any number of programs you want. There's got to be uh, hundreds of various uh, workouts and, and several do dozen different programs that can you can do for weeks or months to try to improve your riding. Uh, terrific. Terrific. Well, this has been great. I, if there are no other questions, going to let you uh, grab a cold one and... and uh, Relax. All Anything right. Else? Well, thank you. Thank you guys yeah, all for coming. I appreciate you taking the time. I mean, you really had it so structured and 
Um, really well done. I, I learned a lot. It's fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. Thank you. It's great. Hey, for everyone out there, just uh, two things. One is I put a, a survey monkey survey. If you could take you know, one minute to answer three questions, I put it in the chat box. So please just take a moment to do that. And the other is next, it's two weeks from today, the 22nd, we'll have Nate English um, on, on the call. Nate is a local Berkeley guy who does coaching. And so regardless of what level you're at, you know, he can help you get to that level. And so it's the, the theme is, um, you know, around how to make use of a coach. It's the best way to go about using a coach. So uh, please join us and uh, we'll be sending out the links and all that. So again, Tom, thank you so much. This is really, really good. And Lisa, thank you for chiming in. That was helpful. Hope to see you out there. All right, everyone stay safe. Tailwinds, everyone. See you later. Bye. Thumbtack.